So, as promised for today's video, we're gonna do the Galaxy S24 Plus. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna do back the same setup as what we did for the Ultra. So, we got the Black Shark 3, uh, what is this thing called again? Black Shark Fun Cooler 3 Pro. Yes, that's a mouthful of a name. And then, this is the same power bank that we're using. Of course, I have charged it to 100%, as you can see here. Again, 90 watt hour power bank, a uh, really powerful one, I would say. And uh, this watt meter is also making a return because we can get a lot of valuable data here with bypass charging enabled. Actually, we can kind of indirectly log the power usage of the phone itself when we are playing the game. And we can also see how much it will thermal throttle. So, so like what we did for the Ultra, I'll be enabling GPU Watch, which I have already did here. And then for Game Booster, all of the options are also enabled. Alternate Game Performance Management option is on. And then Pause USB Charging, uh, Battery Bypass feature for short. So we already enabled that as well. And then for this option here, Game Plugins, I have enabled both Game Booster Plus and also Perv Z. So Game Booster Plus will be at the highest possible settings available, frame booster disabled because for those who are saying that you're getting more than 30 FPS even though you lock the game at 30 FPS, that is because frame booster is turned on. So we are going to turn it off to see the exact number that we're getting. Unfortunately, the bug with the GPU watch has not been fixed yet so we have to turn it off and then play the game. Otherwise, it will just keep crashing. So now it is stable. We are running it at the highest render resolution, by the way. Uh, as shown in our gaming test, it's going to be the same as the Ultra, which is 18 something something by 864 pixels. Let me just plug this in real quick. This goes here. This goes here. Uh, so for the first half of this test, I will be testing the phone without the cooler first and see how much wattage it will consume while it thermal throttles. So we should be getting a sine wave, but I want to know the exact values that it is drawing in. Now, since we have already enabled battery bypass feature, uh, we can see that the phone is now at 35% battery. When we plug it in and play the game for half an hour, the battery percentage would not change. Oh, yeah, power bank turned on. So yeah, it was at 34%. So let's just continue exploring Chen Yu Vale. I guess that's what I want to do in this video. Oh yeah, if you unlock the Li Yue uh, treasure compass thing, you can use it in Chen Yu Vale as well. So yay. So for this video, I'm going to skip a lot of sections because uh, it, I want to make it as spoiler free as possible. But I do want to provide you guys updates and, and my findings. Oh god. You see, when I'm playing during the day, I can get about 90 something ping, which is better because once we did any sort of gaming, Genshin gaming at night, then it will be like half a second of ping. I have no idea what's happening. I hope they fix it really quick. Oh no! Remember, this phone will start thermal throttling at about like 40, 46 degrees Celsius, 47, somewhere around there. So be on the lookout because it's currently rising quite fast. We're already at 43 degrees Celsius. Hmm. Oh my god, stop! Ray, 
outlines your face. Throw my sword! Increase this so that Nahida can do, do the taking picture a lot easier. Whoops, overshot. I am quite surprised since we are still stuck at 45 degrees Celsius only with battery bypass charging this this uh, bypass charging feature turned on doesn't seem to thermal throttle as hard I mean we are definitely throttling we're getting below 55 fps just now but it's not really that huge of a deal which I'm surprised to defeat these animals? Okay, thermal throttling has kicked in, so 50 something FPS, 46 degrees Celsius, but uh, it does seem to recover the frame rate pretty quickly as it maintains 46 degrees. It doesn't drop below 46 degrees, or at least not as much as I would hope to see. Uh, that's certainly surprising. No wonder the S24 Plus with the Exynos 2400 can maintain its performance better. Uh, the phone frame is definitely hot, my fingers are burning and uh, the wattage consumption, I'll leave it on for a few more minutes to see how. This place is massive. <laughs> A lot of vertical area as well. Alright, so first half of this test I will consider it to be done. So Thermal limit 46 degrees Celsius, it doesn't thermal throttle as hard and that is why we are still getting above 50 FPS even though it did reach 46 degrees Celsius. Um, this is interesting, so new data gathered for our upcoming video, subscribe to know more about that in the future. Oh, we should also check the battery percentage, so just now was 30, 38%, 34%, yeah 34. And now it is still at 34%, so yes! Battery bypass doesn't affect your battery, it's just, as the name suggests, it bypasses the battery entirely. Now it is time to slap on the Black Shark cooler. I don't think this will help much because uh, the Exynos 2400 just doesn't throttle as hard as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on the S24 Ultra. 
I'm not sure what's happening here, but more data is definitely better for our test in the future. So once again, the chipset is located somewhere around this area here. So having the cooler as close to the chipset as possible is going to be the best. So uh, yeah, this is what we have right now and we shall continue our gaming test. So with the cooler installed, the temperature should drop to somewhere around 41, I guess, before it hits equilibrium. I will also start the logging for part two right now. So let's continue. Um, yeah, the temperature has really dropped by three degrees compared to just now. So TECs, they work pretty fast. Ah, another one of these puzzles. Wow, the temperature has dropped to 40. Oh, TEC is really doing magic here. Big brain move. Oh wait, what? Where? Oh, okay, that was nice and intense battle, non-stop action and the enemies just keep coming. Luckily, Hyper Bloom means that I can get consistent damage output, so uh, that, that was interesting. So throughout the entire battle, I think we got consistent 60 FPS, right? The temperature did increase back to 42, which is interesting to see. I didn't expect it to increase, but still very well below the thermal limit. Oh god, I need to go up. I mean, it's never gonna thermal throttle once we slap a cooler in and I'm looking at the graph right now and uh, it doesn't seem to change that much in terms of the wattage. Uh, if I do open the map, of course, it's gonna consume less power. So you're gonna see a dip in the graph. So yeah, when I open up the map, the power consumption has dropped. 
to uh, the lowest that I'm seeing here is actually 2 watts. So yes, the graph will fluctuate, but it kind of depends on what I'm doing in the game as well. Yeah, surprisingly with the cooler, I think if I'm not wrong, the, the, the S23 Plus has a lower temperature and that is also because we can move the cooler closer to the chipset itself which is located around here and the cooler is somewhere around this here. So we're getting less than 40 degrees Celsius once the cooler is on the phone itself and in terms of wattage, I can definitely see that this is much more linear than the Snapdragon counterpart, the S24 Ultra. And yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of surprised by the result overall. So we have all of the data for our upcoming future video where we talk about thermal throttling. So do remember to subscribe. And that would be a very, very interesting video since we have all of this data to use in that video. So yeah, we'll see you guys there. Goodbye. Can you veil is amazing by the way. <laughs>